Thank you all so much for taking the time to listen to this Insight Lab. More than a view, getting the most out of your video strategy, as it says on the screen. Uh, the original title was All Things Video, but frankly, that would require a lot more of your time and maybe a bit of champagne, depending on the hour you're watching this, of course. So if you take one thing away from this 20-ish minute session, it will be how you can seamlessly elevate your existing video strategy through digital media. I'm PK Creedon, uh, Senior Director Social. Last year, I had the pleasure of speaking at iProspects Client Summit in Palm Springs on the state of influencer marketing. So apologies if you're hoping I wasn't coming back. I am equally as shocked. And I'm Katie Ryder, I'm a director of the Play team. And I think I'm just here to keep PK calm, but what I'm really excited about is to talk to you guys about how important video is to us and how no matter what you're doing, video is everywhere and we need to be making the most out of what we're doing with it. All right, all right. So two things before we start. First, it's our POV at iProspect. And yes, I'm going to read this slide real quick. Video is a tactic, placement, or element of creative rather than its own separate investment and line item. That's why it doesn't live in its own team. Uh, within digital, whether it's search, social, display, SEO, video can and should be used in a way that is bespoke for each channel. And those teams leading those channels must communicate. Uh, Katie and I presenting this together from two different specialisms is not by accident. Teams that I prospect are constantly working together in tandem to drive efficiencies and really enhance a uh, cross-channel media plan. And then two, when we say video strategy for this presentation, we mean video media strategy, not necessarily the creative element. But I do want to give a shout out to Octavio and Robbie. They do an awesome job in uh, diving into all things creative in their Insight Lab. So definitely give that a listen if you have the time. And actually to steal from Octavio, there's an elephant in the room. It's 2020, you're probably thinking, why are we even talking about video? I've been doing video for years. It's like how the past 10 years have been the year of mobile, but we get it. But video is super important and you're right, but video consumption is growing and it's not slowing down, um, which means there's tons of opportunity for us as marketers to use video to make our brand stand out and to really drive performance. Time spent consuming video is up 22% year over year, and on average, users spend almost seven hours a week watching videos online. Just doing some quick math, that's almost an hour every single day. And this is not slowing down anytime soon. It's forecasted that even as soon as next year, 82% of internet traffic globally, we focused around some sort of video, which is why we're all doing it. 90% of our prospect clients run some sort of video, which is in line with what we see industry-wide, which is about 87%. And despite that 87% stat on the screen right now, it's hard to do video right because it's complicated. I mean, there's OTT, uh, CTV, STCC, VMPDs, Quibi, Tubi, Peacock. I even made up one in there and it wasn't Peacock. So yes, video can be confusing. And with limited investment, we get it. It's hard to know where to even start. Luckily, it is what we do. And with the right approach, we can help you navigate video for each business goal. And I know for some of you listening, video for your team might be managed in house or with another partner, but regardless, the focus of this Insight Lab is to really just arm you with thought starters that will help evolve your video strategy, the way you approach video and really elevate your campaigns through tactical excellence. And that's what we're gonna be leaning into today, that tactical side. So you have a video, now what? Uh, is your goal to break through, to cut through the clutter, to drive awareness? Do we want to engage and retain, interact with our audience, educate them, drive them to spend maybe a little bit more time with our content? Or do we really just need to convert them? Do we need our audience to make a purchase or take that deeper action? And the reality is though, is for each of these, regardless, as long as the right audience placement and tactic is used, video can be used to achieve any of these business goals. And in this Insight Lab, we're gonna walk through each of these uh, strategies and examples of how we brought video to life for that area. And then of course, we'll finish off with a quick dive into how we measure no matter which strategy is deployed. First up is breakthrough. Users are in control of where they wanna consume your content. As PK mentioned, the landscape is complicated and there's hundreds of places that a customer can consume your video. We're all competing with this amazing Corgi and like thousands of cats. So how does your brand break through and capture your target audience's attention? 
In addition to creative, there are things from a media perspective that we can do to make sure we're breaking through. By using video in a more natural or unexpected places to draw user attention, these ads, while they're still able to be targeted, they appear in a more organic place that users aren't expecting to consume your media, which draws their attention to your brand without disrupt disrupting their day. Our first example is how we've done this with our client Abercrombie & Fitch. The brand wanted to include their new fear to introduce their new Fierce campaign, which featured celebrities and popular influencers that promoted the new a &F state of mind. We needed to show up in unexpected ways to make sure the brand stood out as this messaging was way different than what a &F had released in the past. To do this, we ran digital out of home video in markets which highly indexed towards ideal, the ideal a &F customer, um, which we identified as Las Vegas and New York. And we ran video across billboards, city furniture, and within malls. The reason this stood out so strongly is that ANF only typically only runs online advertising, so these like more unique placements allowed us to capture user attention and really raise, raise awareness for this campaign. And these are just examples of breaking through by using the, the right tactic and placement, but capturing users' attention is not always enough to drive business goals, and we understand that. So we have to deploy tactics that also engage and retain. Because the reality is consumers are literally consuming video while they're consuming video. I know when I open up Facebook, I'll click into a video and I'll keep scrolling and that video will just go to the lower right hand part of the screen and I'm watching that video while consuming content. So we need to do more than just break through. There's an old meme that's, that says people are literally Facebooking while they're Facebooking and it's true. So we have to give consumers more of what they want from us as a brand. We need to educate and we need to entertain to have them spend more time actually interacting with our branded content. And we can do this through a number of ways. I mean, instant experiences, there's second screening, uh, interactive ad units like the Instagram poll you see on the right side there, or Facebook polls, Twitter conversation cards, lenses on snaps. We just need to use the right tactic for the campaign. One way to do this, and probably my favorite way to do this, is to use audiences, um, and in particularly audiences of users that are researching or have already shown interest in your brand through a Google search query. These audiences, which are called custom intent audiences today, but Google will probably change it at any moment now, um, allows us to target users on YouTube that have searched for a very certain list of keywords. For our client, Peer One, we leverage these search audiences to introduce their new brand imagery and products. Since these users had already shown interest, we were already and they were already aware of the brand and were in the process of researching home goods, they were extremely receptive to our videos. Using this tactic, we saw a 48% increase in completion rate when compared to our other video campaigns that we were running on YouTube. Another way to keep users engaged is by using platform-specific creative. Our client Hollister was seeing success with their teen audiences across TikTok and Twitch. We knew the audiences were there, but our brand lift studies and engagement metrics were not quite there. So we needed to do something if we really wanted to increase these users' interest in the brand specifically around Hollister's Black Friday campaigns. Um, these campaigns, like most, real, like most retailers, were large, flashy, big discount promotions. But we really needed to make sure that we were able to cut through and engage with these users on these platforms. So what we did was Hollister created pre-roll videos that mimic the look and feel of the individual platforms. So they created a pre-roll video for Fortnite, which you can see is this really this purple llama, um, and this crazy video for TikTok with the wacky inflatable tube man, which was their icon for the season. Um, these videos still promoted the brand and the Black Friday promotion, but having videos that aligned in this native way with the environment sparked interest with users and led to 50% higher engagement rates on Twitch and an 89% increase in ad recall on TikTok when compared to our standard Hollister videos across these platforms. And another example is Jack in the Box. They're an amazing client of ours that is so, so agile. I mean, they are constantly leaning into first to market opportunities and innovative tactics. So Jack partnered with Sonic the Hedgehog movie to launch their Tiny Tacos campaign. Side note, big fan of the tacos. And they used a phased approach for this campaign. And it was always around Super Bowl. The challenge was we needed to generate buzz and brand engagement during a crazy, crazy high branded content time. So what did we do? Uh, we did a lot. Uh, we had influencer video production at the movie premiere. We used Snap Marker Tech. 
as well, but to really engage and retain, we used uh, Twitter video ads. Uh, basically the day of Super Bowl, uh, we promoted that we would actually deliver Jack in the Box and prizes to fans who tweeted using specific hashtags during the commercial breaks of the game in real time. Now, our team wasn't going door to door, but we made this happen uh, using a partner, Fuji. And as you can see by that uh, screenshot on the screen, the response was extremely positive. And we garnered a lot of added value PR from this as well. Uh, we also use another partner, uh, Tresensa, to build customized gaming units where during Super Bowl week uh, on Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat, users were served a lead in video. And once they watched that video, they could actually lead Sonic in like a fast paced race to fill up on tiny tacos. They'd use their heads to, to control Sonic's direction. And I'm like moving my head right now as if you can see, uh, but if users collected enough tacos at the end of the game, they received a free Uber Eats delivery code to use for their Jack in the Box order. Again, we're using video to drive results. And the results were <laughs> incredible. Not only did we organically trend on Twitter nationally for a regional brand, and keep in mind that's without paying for a promoted trend and without a Super Bowl commercial, but we saw an average playtime of a minute and 16 seconds and a 10% above benchmark store visit rate for this campaign specifically. So quick re recap, uh, we've broken through, we've engaged and retained, and as we mentioned earlier, video can and should be used to convert users, really sparking that action. And we can do that in two ways. One, we should always provide users with the opportunity to take action, even if the goal is awareness. A simple uh, call to action under the brand video can drive added value conversions. And then two, we should test video in existing direct response campaigns. Many of us are familiar with converting tactics, right? You have in-feed, brand search, remarketing, dynamic product ads, but within each of those, video should be tested. So instead of remarketing, it's video remarketing. It's dynamic video product ads. There's shoppable video, uh, Instagram stories, all optimized for conversions. Uh, a shoe company, a client of our Saucony, part of the Wolverine Worldwide portfolio, saw over a 50% higher return on ad spend from their video in a recent direct-to-consumer campaign compared to static images. And last but not least, no matter the goal, we need a solid measurement framework. Click-through rate, video completion rate, and cost per view are all really good efficiency metrics and should be considered when measuring success of your campaigns. We even mentioned these in all of our examples, but measuring the true value and success of video comes from additional data points in order to understand the holistic impact of your video campaigns. We approach measurement using a mixture of both in-campaign KPIs and holistic measurement when we're reporting on success. We want to make sure we're measuring the halo effect of our campaigns in addition to how our users are reacting upon initial view. For example, for a branding video, we would look at reach and completion rate during the campaign to ensure we didn't need to make optimizations to targeting, etc. But we would also have a brand search lift study in place to ensure that these branding impressions were driving brand search volume and could ultimately be tied back to a revenue driving tactic. And I know we covered a lot and we both talk fast. So just to recap a few main points. Uh, treat video as a tactic placement or element of creative rather than a media plan line item to maximize cross-channel video performance. This is why video is not a team at iProspect and you should ensure any team you have running video that they're in constant communication to drive those efficiencies. Uh, video is not just an awareness driver. As long as the right audience, tactic, video length, and placement is used, video can be used to achieve any business goal. Appear in meaningful places in unexpected ways to break through and engage with consumers. You can't just increase the number of impressions to reach the impact and impact your audience. It creates noise. You have to choose the right tactic. And then finally, measure holistic through platform UIs in addition to first and third party studies to prove the value of video. Lean into your video campaigns and continue testing, but hold it accountable to the same metrics you hold other creatives and tactics and based on your specific campaign goals. And thank you again so much for listening. If you have more time today or this week, we highly recommend listening to the other Insight Labs because there's just some really, really strong content that we're excited to share with you. So have an amazing day and uh, feel free to email us with any follow-up questions or just to say, hey, thanks y'all.